Well, here we are then, guys. It's time for the final ever season that I'm going to be doing on F1 2020 for career mode. And, you know, the final season, season three of the Williams Road to Glory full stop. So 16 races ahead of us. It's going to be fun. I'm going to try and enjoy every single one of them as we have cherry picked and customized the calendar to my liking. And it's going to be a lot of fun. I really can't wait to get started. There's going to be a lot at stake this season. We are driving in the number one this this year with our car so we're defending our world championship crown of course for the drivers championship but the target this year is to win the constructors championship so we're going to see if we can achieve that and definitively take williams back to glory having said that we've got a lot of you know let's say curveballs in there with you know mercedes and red bull are still going to be incredibly tough to beat the snap and moving to ferrari if you want to see all the transfers and everything that happened during the off season i'll leave the pre-season video linked up in the top right hand corner of the screen guys so go check that one out but without further ado if you're going to enjoy the video like subscribe and let's get into the round number one of season three for the bahrain grand prix now we kick off the episode looking at the confirmation that Sebastian Vettel has indeed retired from Formula 1, then moving into the weather forecast, no rain expected, and then the performance chart. Over the winter, a lot of things have happened and we have consolidated and actually strengthened our grip as the third strongest team in Formula 1 ahead of Aston Martin, ahead of Ferrari, and uh, Mercedes also worth noting taking a big step forward as well over the winter. So they're as fast as ever. We've got one minor aerodynamic upgrade on the way for the next race and hopefully we can add a few more at the end of today's episode but we hop into practice and we see a brand new Williams car with the brand new livery and the number one on the car as we defend our world championship crown from last season heading into practice and you know part of the reason why I changed the calendar was to make it a bit more challenging so strict corner cutting limits we've taken away some of the easier tracks for me in terms of AI difficulty and straight away Bahrain is tough we was off the pace a little bit it's going to be a tricky one we could well be relying on George Russell to deliver a good result and a strong performance in this first race. As you guys know from the pre-season episode, George Russell is 96 rated right now and we are the third fastest team. So it should be a pretty strong recipe for success, especially in this weekend for George to hopefully deliver a strong result. Nonetheless, move the qualifying and more specifically into Q1. Now, for this one, I actually took a bit of a risk and went for the balanced tyre choice. Um, in hindsight, I wish I hadn't gone for it because we needed the soft tyres. Nonetheless, I tried to go on the mediums in Q1. It wasn't actually a bad lap, a 24.2, but we didn't really go anywhere with that lap time. We then strapped on a set of the soft compound tyres and managed to improve straight away by pretty much a full second. And, you know, the lap before wasn't a bad one. There was no mistakes. It's just the soft tyres are so much quicker. And we crossed the line 1.1 faster. We go P13, a lap that at the time I thought would keep us safe. Um, but we went out again anyways because it's actually extremely close and we might need this lap so I'm going to go out as a precaution and you know be on track in case we need the lap so down towards turn one we're going to break at the 100 meter board down the second gear try and open up the uh, entry as much as possible get the power down as quickly as you can through the exit through turn two and three uh, flat out through three short shifting out of two then up towards turn four, bring the car over to the left, brake at about 75 meters. Uh, fourth gear through here, use all the runoff curb without running off track limits. And now we plunge downhill, sixth gear, flat out through the left. That's we then go down towards turn eight hairpin. Third gear corner, possibly second, depending on your preference. Again, important out of here to short shift and minimize rule spin. Down towards turn 9 and 10, the turn 10, the hardest corner on the track. We actually make a bit of a mistake, um, going a bit too hot, overcommit and lose a bit of time. So uh, we're only just a tenth up so far, but still um, a better lap nonetheless as we're now P16. So we need this lap, we need to improve because we're currently out of Q1 as we make our way up the hill to end sec two, flat out through here. You wanna break as that green board on the right hand side appears into your vision. Uh, fifth gear to try and short shift out of there to really get the power down as soon as possible. And we're about two tenths up heading into the final corner. Break at the detection line, fourth gear, tip the nose in, try not to use too much exit curb if you can avoid it, and then DRS open up to the line, we improve by two tenths, is it going to be enough to get out of Q1? Yes it is, and we go P11 behind Nick De Vries in P10 in the Aston Martin, so top 10 for Nick in his debut in Formula 1, and uh, we got through in the end, about four tenths off George Russell's pace though having said that, so not fully up to speed, but a 22.9 
pretty decent lap and uh, the car actually working a lot better in qualifying compared to practice and especially on these soft tyres it seems to be uh, a much better tyre for us but nonetheless moving to Q2 we actually uh, used uh, a new set of tyres for this first run and we set a 23-1 which is not bad two tenths off my Q1 best time on a new set but now we're going to go for my final attempt with P15 and last in Q2 right now so this lap is all or nothing here my last fresh set of soft tyres let's go for a full lap of Bahrain and let's see if we can get anything out of this qualifying session. There we go, out the final corner, opening DRS, it's been a great lap, and we crossed the line to set a 122.7, and in fairness, a massive lap. We go P7, and that could be enough to get into Q3, but unfortunately, it wasn't going to be enough, and uh, we finished P11 just outside the top 10, which to be fair, is not a bad thing, I'll actually take that, that is um, not the worst case scenario, and we can definitely work with that with the free tyre choice. There was definitely pace to get into Q3, I think the mistake we made, I believe in turn 10, um, cost us a bit of time, it wasn't really a mistake, we just didn't carry as much speed as the previous lap, we lost about, I would say, 7 one hundredth of a second, which would have been enough to get into Q3, but nonetheless, I'm not complaining, P11 is perfectly fine and uh, Lewis Hamilton takes an early lead in the new rivalry at the start of the new season so yeah guys there you go there's your lot for qualifying we're now going to move into the race for round one at the Bahrain Grand Prix no more testing no more practice this is the real deal and it's make or break here at round one of this year's Formula One World Championship There's no shortage of passing opportunities around the 3.36 miles of the Bahrain International Circuit, with the best at turn one, of course, and then another soon into turn four. 15 corners here, six to the left and nine to the right, and we could see one or two flat spots into the tight left-hander of turn 10. Let's run you through the driver grid order for today's exciting race. Lewis Hamilton lines up on pole position and Valtteri Bottas will line up alongside. Looking at the rest of today's grid, we have Gasly, Albon, George Russell and Leclerc, Verstappen, Sainz, Norris and Lance Stroll, Martinez, Perez, Nick de Vries and Kvyat, Ocon, Ricardo, Kevin Magnussen and Roman Grosjean, Matsushita, and Antonio Giovinazzi starts from the back of the grid. It's almost time for those five red lights to go out. Then let's see who can prevail today. 
Here we are then, round one, and the Bahrain Grand Prix starting from P11, just outside the top 10, and we get the benefit of the free tire choice, which could prove to be a decisive factor in this race. Strategy-wise, we're going to start on the medium compound tire, and then we're going to move to the hard compound, a pretty straightforward one-stop strategy. It should work well for us. Uh, most of the top 10 should be going for a two-stop, and if they go for a one, they're going to have to do quite a lot of laps on the hard tire, so there's going to be opportunities for us to have a decent race here today my race pace is traditionally stronger as well so let's see how it goes and fingers crossed George can have a strong race as well but anyway enough rambling let's get into the action okay here we are let's see if I can get a clean start as the lights come on here five red lights and we are underway for the season opener not a brilliant start but it's not terrible we actually got after a pretty similar start to those also on mediums as we uh, go to the outside here at turn one. We're going to try and find a bit of space. Looks like we've managed to get ahead of uh, Carlos Sainz here, who's going to try and get back ahead. Look at the acceleration of the McLaren here up towards turn four. We're going to let Carlos get on with it. I'm not going to fight him too hard because we're in a bit of a different race right now. I'm just going to try and make these mediums work, which is what I'm hoping for. But so far, we've held on to our best of the rest status, which is the most important thing. We've got Ocon behind, so he's overtaken Sergio Perez in the Alfa Tauri. So, so far, this is good. Uh, Russell looking like he's had a good start. I think he's in the top five, so love that from George. Exactly what we want from our teammate here today. And hopefully he can have a strong race. But for now, the target is to try and see if we can stay within DRS range by lap three of Carlos Sainz. If we can pull that off, that would be great for us because then that's going to make our stint a lot easier. So I'm going to have to try and push for now. Of course, once again, worth reminding, track limits are on strict. So we need to keep an eye on that and make sure we don't run too wide off the circuit. So lots of things to worry about here. But let's see, first of all, we can try and stick with the cars ahead. Oh, a bit of oversteer there. This is going to be close, but using a bit of the ERS, I've managed to just about stay within range of Carlos signs. I've also managed to drop Archon behind. So this is great from us. Really strong pace early on. I'm going to have to use a bit more DRS though to stick with Carlos. As DRS is now enabled, I want to make sure I get it in this second DRS zone now out of turn three. Easy does it. Had to use quite a fair bit though, but we have got it. And that's crucial. It's going to help us pull away from the cars behind as well. So having DRS is going to be a big, big bonus for us. Now we've got to try and see if we can stay within a second because we are on the limits. We are flirting with that one second window. Well, unfortunately, I wasn't able to stay within the RS range. The guys in front just have a bit too much pace on the soft tyre. But we're still pulling away from the cars behind, so this is good. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to try and keep myself, you know, within range in case something happens. If there's any battles, we'll be there to pick up the pieces. But the pace is good right now, and we're pulling away. So this is, in terms of our strategy, a good thing right now. Another personal best, just keeping that pace going. Gap de Perez now, who's overtaken our con is 2.5. So the guys behind are battling and uh, losing time. I'm still keeping myself within range. I'm not completely dropping off, even though I'm not within DRS. Part of the reason for that is because Stroll is not within DRS himself, I believe. So that's helping me out. I'm starting to get more and more confident here. Gap to signs now 1.2. We're closing back up again. Another personal best. I'm getting stronger each lap. And there's battling in front in the top 10, which is great. The two Ferraris having a bit of a scrap, which is bringing everyone back together again. Meanwhile, the gap is still going up to the cars behind so this is looking pretty good right now we're going to get stronger as the stint goes on as the soft tires and the cars ahead start to fade and there we go we've done it we've managed to get ourselves back within drs range fighting back here in this race not giving up not taking no for an answer is anyone going to pit though that's the question looks like we have got one car in the pits who is it it's actually gasly for red bull okay so pierre in the pit lane russell having a decent race he's still out there fighting away i think he's battling with um Alex Albon in the Red Bull, so George having a great race here today so far. Let's see if anybody else pits this lap. To be fair, I think the two stoppers should be pitching now. If they are two stopping, it looks like we are going to have a few cars in there. So Sainz, Stroll, Leclerc, Albon, Hamilton all in the pit lane that lap, so we're now up to P5. Let's try and close up to Verstappen up ahead in the Ferrari. Oh, I've overcommitted there big time. There's the first warning for track limits. Got to be careful. Not too many more of those. Let's see who pits this lap. George is in. George is in the pits. George in the pits. 
Yeah, it looks like everyone's pitting. So there we go. Everyone on the softs is done now. So we're going to take the lead. For now, Bottas going for mediums. That's interesting. But let's see what our pace is like out front. See if we can try and set some decent lap times. Good pace. Another personal best. Just trying to keep that rhythm up. I think those who pit very early may have gone for the hard tyre. And if they have, I fancy myself to go faster than what they can do on the hards through these tyres. First little bit of oversteer there. Just starting to have a bit of rear tyre wear. But still very, very good pace. The car feels fantastic. And oh my god. Yes. This is it. We're going for this. We're just going to pit. That is a gift. That is a gift. A free pit stop for the hard compound tyres. Bottas as well. One of the probable championship contenders out of the race already. Safety car in the first race. Hard tyres. Let's go, baby. Give me those. Away we go. Everyone behind is going to pit as well. But I think this is going to give us the race lead here. This is massive. The pace was so strong. We're going to re-jump behind Pierre Gasly, but I believe Pierre has to stop. But the pace we had on the mediums was so strong. And look at this, we're now net P2. Um, about to be net P1, I believe, once Gasly pits, I'm assuming. So that has worked out beautifully for us. We're going to see what other tyres everybody else goes for right now in this next stop. And uh, the two stoppers, it will help them get their second stop out of the way. But we'll see what happens in this race. Another thing I do like, and I've asked on the radio, George Russell is P11. He's done his final stop now, so he's going to the end. And there's a lot of cars around me that haven't stopped yet, so George could be on for some strong points as well here, if all goes according to plan. So far, I've not pushed at all on these tyres. I've been on these since the end of lap 12, well, start of lap 13, we pit the end of lap 12, and I've literally been cruising. I've put no stress through my tyres, just to make sure uh, we get them to the end comfortably. You can see my tyres are stone cold. Once a safety car is confirmed to come in, I'll start warming them aggressively. Okay, safety car in this lap, so we're going to go for a bit of a late tyre warm-up here. Just nice and aggressive with the wheel, full lock from side to side to get the fronts activated. Then we start flicking out the rear tyres. A little bit more tyre warm-up here as we get aggressive with it. There we go. Fronts are cold, but that's okay. Not a big concern as we get ready for the restart here. Let's see if we can punch it. I feel like we're going to be at a slight disadvantage here because the medium of these guys is still pretty fresh it's not that worn so um, it's going to be difficult to have a pace advantage but we need to think long term about the race so you know we may well get overtaken by a couple of cars behind us still yellow flag again though something else has happened i can't tell yet either way we're back on the way for the restart half race distance achieved let's see what kind of pace we have on these but i am expecting to get overtaken in the short term well gas has absolutely floored it on this out lap here after the safety car restart. Meanwhile, I've got Hamilton four tenths behind. He's tucked in in the slipstream. After that, everyone's kind of struggling for pace. So right now, we're all pushing quite hard. These tyres actually aren't too bad. Pace is decent enough that I can probably hold on. Oh, another yellow. I think it's the McLaren behind. Not sure there. We might get another safety car VSC. Let's see what happens. Let's stay on board for a second. Lance Stroll out the race. And it's going to be a virtual safety car this time. Let's see if um, those two stoppers might use this as a opportunity to get their final stop out of the way. Gaz is going to benefit the most here in the Red Bull. Will he pit and get this stop out of the way? No, he doesn't. He stays out. That's very interesting. Will Hamilton pit? No, he doesn't. He also stays out. Okay, fair enough. So the AI are not using the VSC to their advantage. Right, VSC ending. We need to get on with it here. Let's be careful to not speed. The Delta really slows down in slow corners, got to be careful. And back on the way we go. There we go, that's a nice VSC restart. Let's crack on with this now. And Gasly pits, there we go. See, that's why it made no sense. Why didn't he pit under the virtual safety car? Hamilton stays out though, and starts Charles Leclerc. We set a purple sector three. So we're now back in the lead of the race. And expecting Lewis and Leclerc to pit any moment now. So we'll keep an eye on that. Perez, net P4, which should be net P2. De Vries could be net P3, make that net P2 as he overtakes Perez. So Nick De Vries in his Formula 1 debut for Aston Martin could be on for a P2 here. Oh, Hamilton on the inside. Bit of a lunge, I had to leave the door open there to not have any damage. I think Lewis will get DRS here, so I'm going to have to let him go. 
But Glow's going to try and get a piece of the action as well, but he's not quite going to come out the inside. Not going to battle too much, as I am expecting these guys to pit, but Lewis seems to have great pace in the medium. It'd be a shame for him to pit. If you can make it last to the end, he could probably win the race, but I don't think he can. Let's see um, if Lewis pits. I'm going to stay on board for a bit longer. We'll see if Leclerc pits as well in the Ferrari as we approach the final 10 laps of the race. Can't lie that the car feels fantastic. The best has felt all weekend. It felt great in qualifying, even better in the race. Hamilton does pit, and so does Leclerc. So there we go. My suspicions were correct. So we're back into the lead now. And that means Nick De Vries will take a second place and Perez up to P3. Let's see who fills up the final top five spots. It's going to be Verstappen up to P3, so watch out for Verstappen in the Ferrari. He could be a threat. George in the pits. George in the pits. And George pits again for the third or fourth time, so I'm not quite sure what happened, but that's going to ruin George's chance of any points. No idea why George stopped again. He must have got damage. Personal best, 27-0. Good pace on that lap again. I just, I'm enjoying this race so much. The car feels absolutely insane. It's just such a joy to drive when the car handles like this. It really is. Although I made a complete mess of turn one there, but still. I'm keeping on with a snap and though. P4, he could be a threat. We'll see how that progresses. I've just done back-to-back -back personal bests. Pace is pretty strong, to be fair. I'm comfortable now. De Vries is getting caught up by Kofi and Verstappen. It feels like Max doesn't quite have the pace in the Ferrari to really get a podium, so it could well be De Vries and Kofi who are on there, but I think they may swap. I think it'll be Kofi P2, De Vries P3. So we're going to set one more personal best here and uh, dip into the mid-26s. And that will do me now. I'm just going to pretty much bring it home. Two laps to go. Uh, the gap to the car behind over 10 seconds. The Vries and Kvyat probably battling right now as we speak. But Stappen's been overtaken by Ricardo, so it would be interesting to see what podium we get come the end of the race. But I'm now going to cruise and uh, just use low engine modes now to bring this car home. And actually, Albon's overtaken for Stappen there for P5, so Max struggling for pace, it seems. Here we are then at the end of Sector 2, about to enter Sector 3 for the final time. What a race! The race pace was insane, and I still think we could have probably got a podium, even without the safety car. I do think the pace of the car was there today. Dare I say win? We were so fast. I know obviously Hamilton passed us on the safety car, restart and everything, but still the pace was great. These hard tires have been phenomenal. Here we go then. We're going to win the opening race in Bahrain and pick up a massive 25 points. Come on. Yes. Another fantastic victory for Williams today. Anthony, tell me, what was it that helped them achieve this success? Without a doubt, the safety car changed everything today. The key to their success was keeping calm and reacting to the situation quickly. We've seen teams in the past throw away wins because they were too hesitant, but here they were decisive and that's allowed them to take the advantage. It looks like it's time once again to hand out the silverware as these successful drivers make their way to the podium. It was a gritty performance today by Williams and they've got the race win to prove it. And there it is then, the new season of the Williams Road to Glory kicks off with a huge bang here today. It wasn't the most classic race or most explosive race from my point of view, but we pick up a very, very surprising race win. Danny Kvyat with a surprising podium from P14 on the grid and Nick De Vries in his Formula 1 debut P3 for Aston Martin Cognizant. Daniel Ricciardo, P4 for Alpine ahead of Est Alexander Albon, sorry. Uh, Esteban Ocon, P6 in the second Alpine. So both cars for them in the top six. Verstappen finishes P7 in the end in his Ferrari debut ahead of Pierre Gasly. Lando Norris, P9 and Hamilton scrapes a point and a fastest lap in P10. Missing out on the points and the top 10, we have Charles Leclerc, Sergio Perez, George Russell, who did a three-stop race here today. Not sure why. Had he not done that third stop, he would have been, I think, even P2. So... Um, not understanding what happened to George in that race. I'm guessing he got damaged. Uh, Giovinazzi P14, Sainz, Grosjean, Magnussen, Matsushita uh, round out the top 18 with Stroll and Bottas out of the race here today. Of course, the driver standings are exactly the same as the final race results. So we take an early lead in the driver's championship. In the constructors, we also lead by five points over Alpine. So not 
not what everyone had in mind, Mercedes in P8, Ferrari in P6, Red Bull in P5, it's a very surprising start to Season 3 in this career mode. But guys, we're not done yet. Let's jump into the upgrades and let's try to improve our car heading forward. You took the top points today. Was it a comfortable win? Um, I mean, no, no win is comfortable, but I definitely think this one was actually you know, compared to what we was expecting at the start of the race, this was not part of the plan. So from that sense, it was actually quite comfortable. The car was fantastic. And yeah, honestly, I've got to give massive credit to the team for supporting such a great car. Did you struggle to get through all that traffic today? Um, no, not really. I think we had a great pace in medium. You know, I was just waiting for the right moment, the right opportunity. And I could just push flat out whenever I needed to, which is great. Great. Well, that's everything. Well, after the race, we managed to claw back an extra point on Hamilton. So we get that point back that we lost in qualifying, which means we're equal five points apiece heading into round number two at, I believe, Zandvoort. So I'm looking forward to that one. A little bit more driver acclaim as well as uh, we now move into the upgrades. Now, we're going to have 1,671 points to work with here. And we've got an upgrade for the DRS on the 28th. We're going to get a few more Ruzel's points on the 30th and the 6th as well before we jump into a season break. So quite a long stoppage before round two. So an opportunity here to get more upgrades onto the car now. Looking at durability, the control electronics need some work. So I am tempted to do some work on that as of when it becomes available. For now, though, we don't have access to it. In order to get there, we need to purchase this MGUK upgrade. So we're going to go ahead and get that on the car because control electronics is so important and we need that to last the whole season if possible. Um, looking at the chassis though, uh, we've got um, a weight reduction upgrade here, an ultimate upgrade. We've also got a couple of major ones. So we'll try and keep an eye out for those. We've got one more that I've left here for the weight reduction. So I'm probably going to go for that one next, but we need a few more R&D points. So we're going to skip ahead in the calendar until we have those available. And just like that, we've now moved on to the 30th of the month. So a couple of days ahead and we've now got 1500 points. So we're going to go ahead and buy this minor one. It's still going to arrive in time before the next race. So uh, looking forward to that one in terms of giving us a bit of a step forward in terms of performance. And now we can pretty much skip ahead all the way to the season break. Here we are then guys, ready for the season break and not what you normally have in mind for a 16 race season to have a season break after the first race. But nonetheless, it's going to be good fun moving forward into the European races now. Zandvoort is up next. We'll pick up the admin work in the next episode. So if you guys enjoyed today's video, let's leave a like on it. Let's try and smash over 1200 likes for episode one. And also for the birds singing outside, you know, a, a big shout out to the birds, big fans of the channel, big fans of the content, I'm sure. Um, they're gonna leave a like as well. So do like the birds and leave a like on the video. Subscribe for more daily F1 content on my channel, guys. It it really helps me out and uh, there's going to be plenty of F1 2021 related content coming very, very soon. And as always, a big shout out to the members for supporting the content and finally check out the two videos on screen, guys, if you have missed them. But that is it from me here today and I'll see you all of you next time. Until then, take care and let's get back from me.